This is a skeleton of Quetzalcoatl Northropi. It had a wingspan of about 36 feet. And there's what it looked like right there with the flesh on it. Uh, that's about as wide as a small plane. Uh, it had hollow bones and the, the skin stretched between there would have been as thin as a kite. Uh, they're often called uh, flying dinosaurs. Di the word dinosaur was not made up until 1850. Before that, they were all called monsters and dragons in all the cultures of the world. But if morphologically, they were more like reptiles than dinosaurs, and they're, they're listed as such. So that's, that's kind of what it looked like with an uh, artist's rendition of a uh, flesh on it. The reason I'm bringing this up... Of all the dinosaurs that could have made it through the Noic Flood and people not hunting them totally out of existence, the pterodactyls and the seagoing ones would be the ones that made it. Uh, they could obviously get up and move and uh, uh, they could escape man. Uh, several of the ancient historians talk about dragons and monsters. Uh, Herodotus, the, the father of history, talks about them. Uh, Alexander the Great, when he was invaded in India, had to stop for a while because they, there was these uh, caves up on a, a hillside where they are, a mountainside as they were going through, where these dragons were coming down to, to harass the soldiers, so they stopped and killed them all. Uh, Pliny the Elder talks about them. Uh, the Chinese culture is basically, the whole thing is, is, has dragons locked up in it. And uh, if you look at the writings of Marco Polo, he said that the, uh, that the ruler of China had a uh, dragon keeper and that they had a, uh, on parade, he, uh, he had a special card made out of... Uh, that, that was pulled by uh, two dragons. So they were probably sauropods. And uh, in the Catholic Bible, there's an extra chapter to the book of uh, Daniel. And it talks about how Daniel kills this uh, dragon slash monster and how he kills it by making uh, basically a wad of pitch and, and uh, fat and with salt on it. To, and then it causes it to clog up its uh, syst its uh, digestive system and it dies. So the, the king challenges Daniel, uh, you know, if you can kill our god here without uh, uh, using a spear or sword, I will believe in, in your god or whatever. That's the basic story, and of course that was taken out of the King James Version. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they, uh, they've always been with us. There's probably still a few in the Congo and, uh, they call them the Condomato and the Ropen and, uh, Borneo, uh, they, they're, you know, it's a very large landmass and hardly anybody ever goes there. It's way down South. So, uh, they're probably down there still, uh, a smaller version, a smaller, you know, not one this big, but a, probably a smaller one. Uh, there's a, every once in a while there's a sighting there's one good video shot a few years ago in Idaho that looks pretty legit to me uh, but anyway they're, they're, they're probably in that giant swamp down in Africa and they're probably in Borneo and there's a lot still in the water uh, which would make sense uh, anyway uh, hey, check out the works of Ken Ham Kent Hoven uh, check out uh, Soft Dinosaur Tissue by Mary Schweitzer. She's being interviewed on 60 Minutes. Again, it wouldn't make it through 65 million years with soft dinosaur flesh. Uh, Trey Smith, my good friend, does professional uh, videos about it. Uh, thank you. I'm out.